Hip dysplasia is a common problem that about one or two of every 100 children are born with, and many parents wish to know whether their child's hips are normal. Hip dysplasia can be easily treated in infancy, but if missed, it can lead to early hip arthritis and a lifetime of disability. The hip is a ball and socket joint. The ball is part of the femur and the socket is called the acetabulum. On the left side of the screen, we see an example of a dysplastic hip where the acetabular roof is shallow and does not cover the whole femoral head. When weight comes up the femur into the hip, such as with crawling or walking, the femoral head may dislocate. On the right, we see a normal hip where the acetabulum covers almost the whole femoral head, making the joint more stable. When a force is applied upward, it is transferred to the bony acetabulum. This socket is properly formed and holds the femur snugly. In a normal hip, the forces exerted on the joint are roughly equal and opposite. In a dysplastic hip, the acetabular socket cannot equally oppose the forces acting on it. The extra force tends to push the femur out of the socket. This is called subluxation if it moves only a little, or dislocation if it comes completely out of joint. The surrounding structures, such as the joint capsule and labrum, try their best to resist the force, but this extra force can cause tears and pain. Most clinics use traditional two-dimensional ultrasound to screen for hip dysplasia. However, the pictures from 2D ultrasound depend on how the probe is held, and who is holding it. For example, looking at the ultrasound picture taken at this probe angle, the hip would be classified as normal, while the picture at this probe angle suggests the hip is dysplastic. Three-dimensional ultrasound has been proposed as a more reliable alternative. A 3D probe has an internal motor so that it quickly sweeps through a range of angles inside while the person holding the probe keeps it still. This takes between half a second and four seconds to generate a stack of ultrasound images which can then be used to generate a 3D model of the hip. We will now see how these models are created and how they are used to show the difference between normal and dysplastic hips in 3D. Note that the femoral heads, the ball part of the ball and socket joint, highlighted in red, are actually made of cartilage rather than bone in children under six months of age. They ossify or change into bone later. On some of the slices from the 3D dataset, we trace the side of the pelvis called the lateral ilium down to the edge of the socket or acetabular roof. This is done for both the right and left hips. We then generate the 3D hip models by interpolating between the traced slices. Here we see three different infant hip models. The normal hip is shown in green, a borderline hip in yellow, and the dysplastic hip in red. To determine whether the hip is normal or dysplastic, we use an index called the acetabular contact angle or ACA, which is generated from the 3D models. The ACA is calculated by first dividing the model at its point of maximum curvature, or apex point. The average direction of the surface on each side of this apex point, called the surface normal, is calculated, and the angle between these two average directions is measured. This is called the acetabular contact angle. Based on measuring hundreds of normal and dysplastic hips, we have found that the ACA is larger in normal hips. This difference allows us to classify hips as normal or dysplastic using the ACA. When infants are screened by traditional 2D ultrasound, most are normal, shown in green, and a few are definitely dysplastic, shown in red. In borderline cases, shown in yellow, the diagnosis is initially uncertain. Luckily, 2D ultrasound rarely misses cases of hip dysplasia, but the borderline category requires follow-up appointments, costing money and resources. This leads to unnecessary stress for parents worried that their child has dysplastic hips. 
3D ultrasound is more reliable as it sees the whole shape of the acetabulum and can eliminate a large portion of the borderline diagnoses using 3D measurements such as the ACA. We imagine a future where hip dysplasia screening will be quick and practical for the patient and their healthcare team. The 3D probe first scans the infant's hip. Then the sweep is displayed to the physician for review, a 3D model is generated, and is automatically classified as normal, borderline, or dysplastic. Both parents and physicians have a reliable answer right away. Someday, 3D hip ultrasound could become as much a part of checking over every newborn as counting fingers and toes.